Bonjour and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about my garage project. This project is on a bench for at least two, three, maybe four years. In fact, um, you're gonna see on the screen actually my old version. This version was built, let's say, around 10 to 12 years ago, way before Arduino became popular. And it was on my garage for many years working properly and until last night it was still op up and running and functioning except for the switches because I use switches on the metal rail that you see behind me and um, the switches were used to detect if the door was completely open partially open or closed but the, the problem is over time the switch stopped working properly so I have to tweak them a little bit to make them work I decided to use a brand new approach with ping sensors you're gonna see how I did it in a few seconds so for now uh, let's let's go through the functions that I need in the garage first I want to be able to let the door open for maybe one hour two hours or so so if I work here for a long period of time or if I decided to paint something I don't want to close the door but I don't want to forget it I used to forget the door open so I need a buzzer to alarm me when the door is left open for a long period of time I need to be able to see if the door is open or closed through the web I need to trigger the opening and the closing of the, of the door uh, as needed to uh, plus I want to be able to detect the uh, carbon dioxide gas that is in the garage just in case I left the car running I also need to close the door or force the door closed if I forgot the door open in the winter we're in Quebec here and the winters are very very cold I mean something like minus 20 minus 30 degrees way below the freezing temperature so it's a risk to leave the door open so I need a way to close the door forcibly if I forget that Am I missing something? Yes, I'm missing one thing. Um, I need also to detect if the light is left on in the garage or not. So this is about all the functionalities that I wanted to implement. Now, I used to call it my over-engineer garage project. Why? Because I used two microcontrollers to do the job instead of only, only one. I could have used only one microcontroller, but I have an R2D2 project and I want to be able to control my R2D2 using master-slave communication. So I use this project as a base for my programming. So that project is using two microcontrollers. One of them is an we must right on the uh, lower level here. And on the top there is a Arduino uh, Mini Pro. Both boards communicate together using I2C. On the top I have most of my sensors and on the bottom I have the power management and uh, the uh, SD card reader plus the, the Wi-Fi function on the bottom. So this is about the way I built it. It's really, really complicated for nothing, but it's a good practice and it's working well. So I'm actually preparing myself to install the controller. It's gonna be installed on the wall right here. So let's begin. First off, let's check the boards. The bottom board uh, contains the two voltage regulators, the 5 volt regulator and the 3.3 volt regulator. This is the input jack. This here is the terminal screw for the relay. This is the relay and here we have the transistor to drive the relay. Uh, I have a capacitor and the um, Wemos D1 Mini Pro. This chip is responsible for communicating with the web and transferring the data on the web and reading the data from the web. Because I want this project to be independent of the Wi-Fi network, I used an SD card to store the Wi-Fi information. And now for the top part, this board contains all the sensors. Here we have the gas sensor on the right. This is the BME 280, the temperature, humidity and barometric pressure sensor. It's an I2C sensor. Here we have the connector for the buzzer. We have the photo cell for the light sensor. We have the push button here that allows me to control the delay. And this is a LED that blinks when I push the button. I use an overpower transistor 
to drive the gas sensor, but it's okay. And finally, I use here an Arduino Mini Pro 3.3 volts. I purposely use different voltages for the two microcontrollers. As I said, it's a test. This combination of boards allows me to test the I2C communication between two chips, even with different working voltages. So this concludes the overview of the electronic part. And the next logical step was to prepare and cut the prototype boards on my CNC. After cutting the boards, I soldered all the components on them, tested the electronics, everything was working properly. The quality was quite good, but I wanted to have something more permanent, a solution that will stay in my garage for the next 10 years. So after looking at the final result, I decided to order boards. So I decided to go on JLC PCB to order my two boards, the bottom one and the top one. By the way, JLC PCB paid for these boards, but to be honest, I would have ordered from that website anyway because I already ordered on that website before and I am absolutely satisfied. The quality is perfect and the tolerances are excellent. So I have no reason not to use GLC PCB for my future projects. After ordering the boards, I had to wait about a week and a half and I received them. As you can see, the quality is absolutely flawless. The precision of the holes is perfect. The size of the holes are perfect. Tolerances seems to be absolutely perfect. I love the quality. I can't wait to solder the components on them. So let's do the soldering. You can see that placing the components was so easy. Everything fits absolutely perfectly. After spending hours soldering components on the boards, it was time to design the enclosure. So I loaded the boards in Fusion 360 and designed an enclosure around it. The next step was to hack the garage controller by soldering the micro switch and installing the two wires on an external screw terminal that I can use to jump with my controller. Now it was time to prepare the print. I sent the casing to my SLA printer and the base to my FDM printer. This is the final result. Very nice. I'm very satisfied. And now with the enclosure, I have access to the SD card, the screw terminal in the bottom part. This is the LED with the push button to control the delay. 
the light sensor and on the, the top I have the power jack. Now it's time to remove the old system and install the brand new one. Okay, now that the setup is complete, let's check. We have a couple of cables below. This one here on the top is the power. This cable here is drilled through the door frame to the LEDs, uh, as I described in the video. This is a, a blue LED indicating that the, port, the door is half open, as you can see here. It has been open for a while, it should close now. Let's wait. Here we are. It beeps to alarm that the door is open. If I'm doing nothing, the door will close. Let, let's see. Oh, it's closing. Very nice. It's working. Okay, now let's check the website on my phone. This site is Adafruit. I have the temperature on the top, the humidity, and I have a blue button, this one here allows me to open and close the door it's working well i'm very happy we have here the state of the door we have the red icon indicating that the door is not closed uh, it takes a while to update this information just over it we see the 48 value this value represents the the level of light inside the garage 28 means that see it's a little bit darker oh here we are the, the icon is now green indicating that the door is closed so this concludes the project for today i hope you enjoyed please subscribe share and see you next time bye